Today I'm going to teach you how to recreate the infamous uh, donut tutorial using nothing but GeoNodes. Um, it's actually much simpler than it looks. This is this is everything. This is the donut. This is the cup. This is the table. This is the wall. Everything on the screen is made with geometry nodes. All right. So, in a typical tutorial, first thing to do is tell them how to do, 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 do. Node Wrangler. Uh, it comes in uh, Blender by default. It's turned off, but it does exist. Just go in there, type in Wrangler or Node, something like that. Turn it on. It's very important. All right. Control, right mouse button, and drag will cut a line. Uh, shift right mouse button draw a line creates a point uh, or if you have two things uh, like here if you have two of them now you have one going in and two going out it's very good for um, uh, making things look pretty it becomes necessary later on alright so I think it's like Alt, Shift, well, what is this? Ah, this is the cup. My cube is the donut. Okay, so this is the donut. To create a donut is actually incredibly easy. Um, first of all, you take a circle. I'm holding Alt, Shift, left click. Let's turn everything else off. Saucer, tabletop, brick wall. So, you start out with a circle. And I don't know if this will work from in here. Well, hold on. There you go. You start off with a circle, and you do a curve to mesh with a profile, uh, another curved circle. So this is basically a circle around a circle. Uh, and the radius, I set the radius because if you set the radius of the of the main circle, which is this one. See, it's just a curved circle. If you set it to be the same radius, uh, let's see, what is the radius of this one? Donut radius one meter. Alright, so if you set it to the same, they basically, everything touches. Uh, so you have to make it smaller. So, make it a little bit smaller so that you have some, a donut hole. Uh, if you set the two radiuses to the same, you won't have a donut hole. Radius. Ah, thickness. I gotta set to thickness. And a ratio of two to one is pretty much an ideal shaped donut. Uh, if I turn the texturing off, um, what else do I do in here? Oh, I do uh, set position. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there you go. All right, so this is what the donut, just the circle of circles looks like. Um, then, I don't normally use mesh bullions uh, unless it's just a one-off because mesh bullions are extremely extremely slow in complex if I was making a thousand donuts I, I absolutely would not use mesh bullion uh, but in this case uh, I'm taking another curved mesh of another donut see that's just all that is and one on the inside and I'm subtracting those two 
See, taking it from the inside and the outside to give a little ring on the inside and a little ring on the outside. Now, this is the very first time I used um, geometry nodes. So, yeah, forgive me if uh, I do things a little bit differently now than I did before. Then I do a, a subdivision surface one with no crease. This. I don't know what that's for. Oh, it's for the, creating the texture. I think. Uh, da, 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 where am I at? Okay, so. Oh, that's for making the icing. So, I have duplicates um, of the donut. But I do a set position uh, to create a top to the donut. Basically, what this does is... Kind of creates an absolute value, but adds just a tiny amount to it, um, so that it. If you did an absolute value, uh, it would be exactly the same as top and bottom. You wouldn't have any thickness to the icing. Um, like you see how there's just a little bit of thickness there. If you have them to be exactly the absolute value. Um, there's no thickness. So, let's see. That creates the icing. Um, oh, this creates a little bumpiness in it. Let's see. If... Uh, let's see. If the Z is below, you know, a certain threshold, uh, so the Z axis, so that only the bottom parts get stretched, and this roughness is basically a 50-50, uh, it's to create uh, a jaggedness to it. See, if you don't have that in there, everything goes down at once. So that creates a, a jaggedness to it. Uh, and it's all done by set. Set position is not the same thing as a transform. Set position goes by point by point, whereas transform moves the entire object. Then you smooth it out, and you get the nice little drips for icing. And for the donut itself, it's it's just, you know, create the donut, and it goes all the way to geometry. There's, like, nothing in between. Uh, it's just a circle of circles with, you know, the circle removed inside and circle moved outside. Uh, I believe these are the sprinkles. So I take the icing. I distribute uh, uh, points on faces. Then of those points... I pick the ones that are above um, the z-axis of 0.33. Uh, to be more efficient, I probably should move this to here. It has the same effect, exact same effect, but instead now there's just no points there, um, which, let's see, timings. Okay, so timings for this is 0.43 and 0.1. You know, they, they're pretty fast. But it increases it ever so slightly. You know, 20% faster. Roughly. Again, this is my first first one I made, so forgive me. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is a line profile curve of a circle. 
Okay, so this makes, this is essentially a cylinder. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just use a cylinder, but this is, this creates a cylinder. AKA a sprinkle. So this distributes uh, the sprinkles over the icing that is above the Z level right here. Uh, I rotate the instances randomly. Not, r is it randomly? Um, right here, uh, that number right there is two times pi, or you can just type in the word tau which is the radian equivalent of 360 degrees. Ah, inside the donut. What does this do right here? Ah, I had to move the sprinkles up I'm guessing to match where I move the uh, icing up. Because you don't want the icing exactly where the donut is. You want it sitting on top of. Subdivision surface. Just a tiny bit of crease to give the uh, sprinkles a little bit of shape. Again, that's just alt. Hold in alt and shift and left click. That might be part of No Wrangler. I don't know. But that's... That's the donut, the icing, and the sprinkles. That's everything right there. I mean, it's a, 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 a donut is a circle of a circle. Let's see. Let's check out the materials. So I take the, the Z coordinates and use a color ramp. It makes, and I just adjusted the color ramp to fit my donut, like manually. Uh, I took the brown on bottom, brown on top, and a little bit lighter in the middle. I did an overlay with a noise texture to give it a little bit of uh, depth to it. Okay, I forget. There it is. Control, in this menu, it's control shift to get the viewer. So, you can see what it looks like without the overlay of this. Just gives a little bit of... Uh, bumps to it. And then I use the same factor here to add to the normal. That is really weird. Why does this give something completely different than this? What did I do? Uh, mission strength is zero. I gave it a little bit of subsurface because, you know, donuts are, uh, you know, they're light and fluffy. So there's, that must be where the, the lightning comes from. And let's see, got the icing. Uh, I changed the color by the subsurface, you know, give it a little bit, a little bit of a waxy look to it. Uh, noise texture on the roughness, so you have shiny spots that are, you know, still wet. And random object node into the factor uh, constant that way each sprinkle is one of this number of colors I did not change anything else and that's that's the donut and all the textures I mean it's extremely simple to do in uh, geometry nodes much easier than 
you know, modeling or doing in hard code. All right, let's take a look at the tabletop. And again, this one is just geometry nodes. Curved mesh, quadrilateral, which is the uh, same thing as saying a rectangle or square, parallel. It basically, it says it has four sides. Quad means four. So, yes, I could have used a cube, but I wanted to make all my shapes myself. So, to make a cube, it is a um, any type of line segment. Um, and curved mesh of a quadrilateral. And you can also make uh, like pyramids with this by setting it to trapezoid. I think. Yeah, you get something. <laughs> uh. Trapezoid should give you. Ah, I'm not gonna worry with it right now. Rectangle. That way you get tabletop. The shader for this one is not very complex either. Take the object coordinates, plug into a noise gesture. I don't think this is even necessary. Nope. So you can delete this. So it's a noise texture. Uh, let's see. Is it control shift? Yeah, control shift. So it's just a you know very basic noise texture. Uh, fed into the vector of a bigger noise texture which picks out this. Uh, then I use the wave texture to make the bigger lines and add them all together. Well, this, this color ramp you know changes this into this uh, because I got the white really close to the dark. Um, like if you bring it up and kind of smears it. Bring it back down and you get more focus lines that you'd see in marble. Combine them together, you get your splotches and your lines. Yeah, I, I put like no effort. I think it took me 20 minutes to make all this on my very first attempt ever using uh, geometry nodes. Let's see, saucer. Ah, yeah, saucer. Let's look at that one. Geometry nodes. Saucer. Let's mute the donut. Oops. Alt shift. There we go. So essentially, I make a circular plane, a, a cone, not a cone, a uh, cylinder, really short cylinder. Then make an offset of x squared plus y squared divide by 3.3, .3, which controls how hyperbolic it is. Say 10. Like the larger the number you have, the more it gets back to its original shape. Smaller numbers makes it more, oops, not negative, more hyperbolic. 3.3. .3. Looks like a good saucer. And I combine that with another, oops, alt shift. Which is just, you know, a, essentially a donut or a ring or something like that. 
move it down to where it needs to be, join them together, you can get this. Uh, I set to the same material as the table, just because I was getting like super lazy by this point. Uh, let's see. I don't even know what that is. I think that's just nothing. Back wall is same thing I did with the um, the countertop. It's just a, a cube. And when I did a subdivision surface, I made sure the crease was 100%. The, another way to do uh, subdivision with 100% crease is subdivision mesh. Exact. These two things will do ex there. These two things will do exactly the same thing. Might be able to see it better if I use. Wow, that's a that's a lot of subdivisions. Well, you get the point. They're exactly the same. Let's see what have I not done? The cup. I haven't done the cup yet. So the cup I made exactly the same way as the saucer. Um, the only difference is I had a lower number here, which made it more hyperbolic, like a cup would be. And this right here is just a, you know, a ring or donut. Same way I made the curve of a curve, curve to mesh. Um, and then I made this little handle here, which is... that right there. Oh, now I'm like, I was trying to figure out how it didn't make a whole donut, but I didn't use a, so you can barely see it, there we go. Uh, it's just a, a curve, doesn't have to be a full circle. The circle makes a donut. This can be anything. When you make a curve to mesh using this as the curve and the, a circle as a profile, you'll get a cylinder that can be bent or shaped any way you want. See, I can I can control the shave. Um, I was getting, I mean, this was never supposed to be shown to anyone. I was just making it as quick and dirty as I possibly could, um, knowing absolutely nothing about geometry nodes. Like I said, this entire thing took me about 20 minutes. I uh, see. I do believe that's everything.